Now, of course, one of the things we've seen talking about content, and we, we, we all know about static posters. Um, th there's a challenge to, to take a static poster into this new realm. So uh, how, how, how can we go about that? I mean, you mentioned some of the things there about graphic design and school of art and whatever, but uh, is, there, is there a set of rules to uh, take the static poster into this new age? I think one of the biggest challenges at the moment is for the marketing departments to recognise it isn't just a quick add-on to whoever creates point of sale. It actually needs some resource behind it to plan some kind of content strategy, not just for a launch, but for ongoing as well, to manage the content that they want to put up on the screens, to change it with the speed that they can change it with. Um, that's slowly shifting, but I think in the past it's been very much, okay, yeah, we'll just give it to this person who's already doing a bit of point of sale, maybe doing a bit of online, mm -hmm. they've got the content, we'll, we'll just give that to the creative agency. Do you see mm -hmm. people changing things? I mean, we can day part with uh, content, mm -hmm. but do you see people really making well, the most of the I think the first, con content? The first consideration, consideration is maybe you need to tear up the rule book because the, the rule book that worked for um, static posters may not be the same rule book that you need for for digital out of home. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and w whenever you have change, whatever business you're in, um, sometimes it's tough because you've got to have some lateral thinking. You've got to change some of your, your existing work practices. So um, I think what we're, we're seeing is still um, a situation where if, if we just replace a poster with a digital image, we're, we're certainly not making the most out of the, the medium possibility. And at the end of the day, it's, it's not about the technology, it's about the content, absolutely. And it's about the, the, the consumer, whoever is in, in, you know, in front of that content, um, and depending on whether you want any interactivity. So, you know, the, co the concept of, of having to book campaigns by in, in two week intervals, you know, because, you know, that's when you're going to change the posters, you're going to do a revamp, yeah. you know, it's gone away. But I don't think everybody's grasped that yet. So, you know, the first thing is we need to think about what are the new rules of the game? What are the opportunities that are there? And then there is going to be quite a, um, you know, there is going to be a process of change and there is going to be a process of education to allow us to fully embrace and, and, and get a good return on the opportunity that Digital at Home gives us. So think about, you know, what the new rules of the game are and obviously the dynamic advertising, whether it's interactivity or or whether it's day parting are, are certainly the first, you know, very tangible um, things that you can look at. Right. Okay. I think the um, one of the challenges of moving from static to dynamic science is just the tools. I mean, posters for 150 years have been a three by two aspect ratio with digital it's 16 by nine or 16, 16 by 10 portrait or landscape, but those are pretty boring. And how do you, what, what tools are available to design signs of arbitrary shape, of mm -hmm. different shapes, zigzags, ag, uh, angles, um, whatever? What are the tools available to uh, create uh, signs that are maybe even going to change not just the, the uh, visual content, but the shape? Uh, we're finding in our company um, a large uh, interest for digital out of home signs for events, where uh, the shape may only be there for two days change and, and move around. Um, I think the industry needs not just designers but tools. Uh, we need people to rethink how they create content in, in completely different ways. So that you're right, the rule book is, has, ha has had to have been thrown out because of 16 by 9, 3 by 2 just don't, um, aren't, aren't interesting anymore. Okay. So mm -hmm. you both, it's interesting that you've both said that people need to tear up the rule book in terms of moving forward. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Mood have been doing for a long time is music. Uh, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk about audio and things, but it's more experiential and you've been playing with smells and scents yeah. in stores. And I think very much about it's creating this you know, unique shopping environment, making sure that it all dovetails, meets the brand, gets the messages out there to, to the retailers. Um, audio is very important. Um, we've commissioned uh, with YouGov just recently a piece of research, um, went out to just over 2,000 people and um, results came back that two thirds said yes, they would actually stay in a store for longer if their atmosphere was right. Mm. Um, and it's things like that, that you know, that's what we work towards and digital signage I think plays a vital 
element in that. You mentioned targeting earlier. Um, it, it is that new mindset of people recognising mm -hmm. that you can sell umbrellas in Scotland whilst you can sell suntan lotion in Brighton if you want to. You know, British weather is like that. <laughs> you can do that and, and make these changes. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, the scent, the smell of the store, the audio, the visual, mm -hmm. it all creates this you know, enhanced shopping environment ultimately to keep them in store for longer. And right. And you, you've been working with a number of universities, Bob, on things like this, haven't you, in terms of how people react to shape and sound and we do. We've been music and art. Uh, shape, sound, even brightness. I mean, there's we, we've done, we've commissioned uh, and had results for um, at Human Factors um, facilities at different universities to s say how bright a sign should be. You can be too bright. You can be too dim. You can have uh, contrast is important. Um, shape, sound, and so forth. In fact, we're seeing um, a, a lot of take up of panel displays. Uh, for live arts as well, not tradition, not digital right. of home, out of homes. You and I would uh, think of it, but performing arts as well. So, and of course, you can always get subtle messages across uh, yeah. in the background. Because there, performing so. arts is very much like some of the retail theatre that you put together. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. we've seen good examples of retail theatre, I think, Ian, across across Europe really these days. Well, I think, um, I mean, I completely agree about the experience. How are you going to get people off off? Uh, off the computer, off the internet, shopping online, and want to come in to experience, you know, the store. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, there is a theatre about it, isn't there? Um, and uh, but I think that the, the, one of the parts of it is is impact. I mean, you know, depending on where you are and the and the environment, obviously the dwell time, and the impact, and impact comes in many shapes and sizes, perhaps. Um, because it is, you know, we're we're very much within within Harris about making sure that you get very high quality content in terms of creating, you know, having tools to be able to, to display high quality content um, because I think that impact is important. Yep. That's one element. Um, another may be, you know, the size and the shape. I mean, we, we are seeing more interest in video wall technologies now, um, perhaps to get, you know, a higher impact in certain areas of a store. And also um, looking at what what is going on within the content you know to engage rather than just a single um, frame you know there may be a number of multiple things you know to to, to get the engagement and again um, shape and I was I was listening to um, there was a radio program recently about fonts there was a book recently written about mm -hmm. fonts and and it's very intriguing actually just listening about it because actually depending on the font that something's written in a company logo or message will will trigger different emotions and it's the same with a with a color you know um, orange you know we, we've got things that are very easily identifiable identifiable with with certain companies with color so I, I think it's all part of that mix where that impression you see whatever it may be you know sound shape quality basic quality it, it all smell. impacts smell. you know that yeah, smell. Yeah. Yeah. It, it all impacts that impression and and then you know, where do you go with that yeah. in terms of, you know, have you got the engagement and then, you know, does the message go across? Yeah.